Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Kwame Bab, and uh, this talk is called Translating the Flashiness of Fighting Games, Melee Visual Effects in VR. And uh, some of what I wanted to share with you um, and talk to you about is, the, is kind of the purpose of VFX in fighting games and using some of the, and talking about some of the visual techniques that they use uh, to make the combat really punchy and flashy and impactful. And I wanted to talk through some of the lessons that I learned working in VR and trying to translate some of those effects um, and those techniques into the VR space. And again, my name is, is Kwame Bab. I'm a principal VFX artist at Shell Games. And I've been in the industry for about 13 years, 13 plus years um, now. And uh, the place I work is called Shell Games. Again, it's in Pittsburgh. And it's a, it's a very, very cool place where we work on a lot of different types of uh, gaming experiences, all the way from educational titles to entertainment titles. Uh, from we have some some products that are toys and um, science VR programs for the classroom all the way to the entertainment stuff um, that I'm talking about today. And one of our entertainment titles that you may know of um, is called I Expect You to Die, uh, which is a fun kind of spy escape the room themed game. Uh, but the game that I'm here to talk to you about today is called Until You Fall. And this title is a VR melee combat action game that we made in the Unity engine. Um, it has roguelike elements in which you play a magical knight um, that you're, and you're traveling through and fighting through a neon uh, synth wave kind of fantasy based environment. Um, and the combat is, is what, we, what we kind of talk about as rhythm light. It's got some, it's got some rhythm and uh, choreography almost to it some timing that we wanted to be able to present to the player and have them react to in vr which was which was kind of a cool fun idea and we really wanted to and i really wanted to make the combat really punchy and flashy like some of the fighting games that i really love uh, so here's some uh, here's some video for you to check out of that Right. Cool. So in, uh, you know, when when I was starting to to try to figure out how to do um, to bring that feel over to VR, I really just started researching some of the games that I really love to play and that I really watched and saw a lot of the VFX and just was kind of wowed by them and, and wanted to take on that challenge of bringing them to, to VR. So some games like God of War, um, Soul Calibur, Dragon Ball Fighter Z, all these games have really impactful, really stylish VFX um, that really do the job of like being able to communicate what the player is doing. Um, and so that's what I started to research and try to bring over to Until You Fall. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about the job of fighting, of VFX in fighting games. What visual effects do? What, what's their purpose? Um, and what I believe they do is they express the power and the style of the combatants. They really uh, embody the style. You know, some, some combatants have different styles. Some are blue fireballs. Some have energy that come from their fists. Um, so all of these things express the character's style and what they do. Um, they, uh, the, via, the visual effects will also kind of describe the uh, bounds of the character's ability. So where they hit, how they hit, are they round, are they beams, um, are they magic missiles, that kind of thing. So it's kind of a way for the player to be able to understand um, how these abilities work as well. And, and the most important thing really that encompasses all of this is that VFX are about communication and feedback. Um, everything that the player does, everything the character does, um, is shown via VFX, um, whether that's a hit or a missile or a miss or a block or a super move. All of these things have accompanying VFX that kind of describe and express this, the power of all of this, all of this stuff. So um, I wanted to touch on the techniques 
uh, that a lot of these, a lot of games use, a lot of fighting games use to really make these things punchy. Now we have the basics, which are you know kind of attacking and damage and blocking effects. Um, these things are pretty standard in most games, um, although they do have a sliding scale of, of intensity depending on the style of the game. God of War's style was a little bit more realistic, but they did go fantasy in some ways. Um, and in this case, their blocks were really, really punchy and they did kind of cool distortion and sparks. Um, screen flash is a huge one that um, <clears throat> a lot of these games will use to try to uh, make certain moments really really special and they really add a lot of level of impact in the flash of the brightness that helps the player understand whoa this this amazing thing is happening uh camera shake is a big one that adds some weight to a hit um this is not necessarily a visual effects as far as you know using a particle or a sprite or anything like that but it is an effect in that the, the it adds it adds motion to the camera that allows um for the player to feel a little bit more than they normally would if that that wasn't there and the last one is hit pause and this one is kind of a, a cool like sneaky one that is different in a lot of different games but what it does is it allows the the player and the game itself to present this very moment when the hit actually hits and and if you hold there for for a, a part a part of a second um, it really helps to solidify the impact happen. It lets the player play it. It lets the player um, kind of focus on the pose of the characters. You know, one's being hit and the other one's doing the hit. Um, so it's something that really, really helps to focus the player and make those hits feel really chunky. And we wanted to use all of these, as many as we could, um, in VR. So let's talk about how this went. So that's kind of the next part of the talk is to, I'm going to talk through how how translated these into VR actually went. What were the adjustments I needed to make? What were the lessons I learned? And that's the most important parts. So lesson one, uh, respect the player's central vision. So in all in a, in a lot of these combat games, uh, all of the combat, all the focus happens in the center of the screen. Um, the cent the and, and a player's central vision is really where they're always going to be looking to make sure that they can uh, they can read the enemies, they can know when to attack, they can know when to block, know when to dodge, and understand uh, that the next enemy or or the next attack is going to be coming at that same spot. So that's really no different for VR. Um, everything happens in the center and you're still focused on there even though your camera is the is your is your own head this time um the center of the screen is still really important and you can see in all three of these i just kind of put this little cross here to show like even in the gif in the bloodborne gif you can see um that all that stuff is happening right there regardless of the character you know in a 2d game or in a uh, in a in a traditional flat screen game like tekken the game you know the characters will be on the sides of that center in, in a 3D game like like Bloodborne, the character will be maybe behind it, or if it's something like Resident Evil 4, maybe behind it to the left or something like that. But all that combat is still pointed towards the center. Um, and, a, and we kind of hit a, I know I did anyway, a, a major hurdle that I really learned about in this case was like, oh, um, tunnel vision is really a big problem here. Um, the reason being is that in this game, gets this game gets really hectic. And once this game gets hectic, you know, a, a player's body heat rises and your adrenaline starts pumping. And as soon as that happens, tunnel vision starts and you're and you lose players start to lose the periphery of their vision and their vision gets closer and closer and closer to the center. And all of a sudden now I have very little space to actually play these VFX. Um, and so I still need to play them. It's still important for the player to know, oh, I, I hit successfully. I did damage there. I need to block this. Uh, but. We, I got to make sure that it fits in this little space and it works well. So some of the things I ended up having to do for that was one, I needed to just make sure that the, the visual speed of the effect was kind of just like succinct, you know, like it was, it was, a, it was quick and it showed it did its job and it kind of got out of there. Right. Because, um, if, if it ling lingered too long, the player's not going to be able to see anything and that's, n that's no good. So I had to speed that up a little bit. And one of the other things that I did was, um, and you can see on the right, the right image here is that I had the particles, some of the particles, especially the little lingering ones, secondary effects like wisps, 
smoke and debris and things like that, I had them linger in space a little longer. And the, the thing that that did, and you can even see that on the first and the slide on the left too with some of the smoke and the hits. But the reason that I did that was it, sometimes it's a little easier. It gives you, if you use more time to let the player focus on what happened and kind of refocus their eyesight, especially when tunnel vision is, they're in the midst of tunnel vision uh, because that, that tunnel vision will ebb and flow as, as the uh, tension of the fight rises and falls. Okay, so lesson two. Strive for style, but beware of distracting the player. And this is a big one. Okay, so I start here with flat screen melee hit effects. And we've got some wonderful games that uh, I love, you know, in Guilty Gear and, and Tekken. And man, they got some real chunky hits. They're just, they're just real hit. The hit pause is nice. And there's some real nice sprite flashes, um, some real nice impact there. I, that's what I want to do. I want to make sure that I put that in this game. Um, but in, in specifics, I wanted to talk a, a little bit about this, this jam hit here. And you can see um, that's the moment of impact. And you can see how big it is. Uh, and, and that's what makes it kind of really feel good. It's, it's so big. Um, it, it's, about, it's almost twice as tall as the character. Um, and it's almost twice, two and a half times as long. Okay, so, so what would happen if I actually put that in this game now? You know, we can't even see Jam's arm in that, in that shot on the left because the, the effect is taking up the whole thing. And if I did something like that in VR, you'd end up with something like this. And yeah, it'd be fast, but it'd be such a bright flash. It, it would actually probably make the player jump from their own hit. So, and this actually made people feel like that. It made them feel like, oh, this is every time they hit, this is, this is too much. Um, so this really couldn't it couldn't work that exactly like that so there had to be a little bit of translation here to bring that size down a little bit and to work on um, really making something in the same vein but not quite so massive um, and so the top left image here is a concept that i started in thinking about that same a similar shape you know an orange kind of burst um, with a line that goes through it but not not nearly as big right um, and then in, in, in the bottom right here, you can see kind of a, an animation, an animated GIF of the kind of what the final thing ended up being. And it ended up being, you can see the line, you can see the flash, right? So all that works, but the smoke is there and there's kind of the waves that come out from after it and the, and the um, there's a little armor pieces fly off and then you see some sparks. And all of these things kind of accentuate the hit, but beyond that original flash, that base flash. And that really helps the whole thing feel big. The smoke grows and the line expands and all of those things help it feel big, but not just take up the entire screen with that initial flash. Um, the particle motion too that happens on the sparks actually do a lot to help emphasize the player. And we'll talk more about that in a future lesson. First, let's talk about projectiles. So projectiles is another very interesting thing that is, you know, Every single, well, not every game, every, not every game, but a lot of fighting games have projectiles and their sizes differ from player to player, um, from character to character, from, it's some, from strength of attack to strength of attack. So some, you know, some characters have a light, light attack, heavy attack, and mid attack, and they're all different sizes. Um, but in this case, this attack is pretty big. And this is kind of what I wanted to do. So what happens if I try to do something that's that big, a big solid sphere that travels from, you know, our hand out to the enemy? It's way too big again, and it's way too solid. Um, so this isn't going to work. I can't, I can't just use a, a big sphere. So what do I have to do? I have to try. So what I ended up doing was I shrunk the projectile for sure, right? Because that's the first thing that has to happen. And I really tried to do similar to the other thing, the, uh, so the melee attack, is I tried to make residual effects that, that kind of made the effect feel that big, but had those go away kind of quickly. So you can see in the concept at the bottom, there's some rings, there's some waves at the beginning that, that are about that big, but you can still, it looks like you can still kind of see through them, right? I made it so that those things don't take up the entire space. Um, and in this slide, you can see some of the, uh, some of the results of, of doing that. The top image is, is a, 
is an animation of kind of my uh, first pass and early pass of this. And you can see those rings come out and take up some space, but still have space in between in the middle so that you can actually see through. And the bottom one is the final attack. This attack is called Soul Burn. And you actually throw this projectile when you swing, when you activate the ability and you swing your arm. So it's like you're tossing it from the weapon. Um, and some of the things that act, that, that, that ring, so you can see how the rings work um, and you can still end up seeing through them. And those embers kind of last behind as, as the projectile flies forward. All right, so the next lesson, combat game field tricks work in VR, but they need iteration. So these are some of the, uh, we're talking about some of the little tricks that they did uh, that fighting game uh, developers often do in games to make their attacks feel chunky. We talked a little bit about this earlier. The first one here is screen flash. Screen flash worked extremely well for us in VR. Um, now we did have to do some tuning to make sure that we don't blind the player and we don't trigger players because this is very, very bright and very flashy. So we had to tone this up and down for sure. But um, in this GIF, you can see I actually paused it at the moment of the screen flash being the brightest. So you can see how it's, what it's doing to this hit and how it's creating that impact moment. And it really does add a lot of flash and a lot of, uh, a lot of boom to that moment to really make, it, make the player feel it. The second one is hit pause. Um, and hit pause was kind of interesting what we had to try to do in this because, because the game is in VR, the player has full autonomy. They can move their arms, their head, however they want. And so we really can't pause you. Uh, so, and we can't pause the, we can't pause the whole game. So what we had to ended up doing is, and this is definitely is not uh, me, but the, um, our combat designer and animator had to work to actually add the hit pause in the, just in the character. So we added kind of a, almost like a glitch, like a, um, a flinch, you know, hit that kind of pauses the character and really like emphasizes that hit. And you can see it in that GIF there. And the third one is camera shake. Camera shake is uh, something we talked about as well with that, uh, the, the GIF earlier in the, in the talk. And here you can see that this is a super attack I, um, I'm using in this GIF that just creates this wave of energy. And right at the moment of activation, we shake the screen and the screen again, the camera is your head, right? So we actually do shake, we shake it a little bit, not too much because that can create motion sickness, which you do not want to get uh, or, or you don't want to bring up in your players. But it actually works really well when done subtly, and it does create that same power, that same impact. All right, next lesson. Reward player interactivity with visual effects. Uh, in traditional fighting games and flat screen video games, um, one of the things that it, it, we, I think we take it for granted a little bit because once you get into VR, you kind of you lose this a little bit. But every button press, every you know complicated motion or simple motion, it, it it gives you a response, right? So if I press light attack, I get a sword swing or I get a kick. If I do, um, if I do a special motion and I get a special attack, I get an even better result. So every single button press does something cool, does something special, creates a moment. And in VR, the, the moments there for you to move, you moving creates the moment, but sometimes those moments don't, aren't, aren't augmented. So sometimes you moving, you don't you can't necessarily feel like Ryu or feel like Sofitia. You can't actually feel like them because you're just kind of waving your arm. You don't get the cool wave. You don't get any of the cool stuff. But if we can add some of that cool stuff, when some of those moments happen, man, it feels really great, especially if you can interact with it as you move. Um, so that's what we did um, in Until You Fall. And some of these moments, we really tried to add interactivity, like the thing would react to you moving. So in this first GIF, this is a, uh, at the end of each level, there is a reward that uh, there's a crystal that kind of explodes with power and you absorb the power. And all of these trails and all these particles and all these little motes, they come into you, right? They flow into your body. And as you move your arm, they will come with you, right? So every single time you beat a level and you, every single time you get this interaction, it can be a little different because you're moving a little bit different. Your arms are in different places. Um, so that's a really cool interaction. Um, and I, I mentioned this before, but when you swing, every single different way you swing, the sparks fly with the direction that you swung. Right, so this again puts emphasis on you doing this the way you want to, and and the VFX rewarding you for doing it that way. It, the game is kind of watching you and going, okay, yeah, we'll let you do that. You want to do that? Yep. You're going to want to go left. You want to go up? Cool. We got you. 
This one was a really fun one that we kind of put in a little bit later, but ended up being really, really fun, is that this one, uh, you know, people wanted to clang their weapons together because it was just a cool fantasy thing that people wanted to do. So we actually made sparks, you know, we, we spawn sparks when you uh, clash your weapons together so you can act like you're sharpening it. It kind of gives you a cool badass moment where, you know, I want to sharpen my sword before I get this guy. And that feels really, really good because players will end up kind of playing in that moment. And, and the same thing with crushing those things. So uh, in that reward moment, you get these crystals that power you up. And to get the power, you have to actually crush the gem. And in this moment, a, a whole bunch of things happen to make that moment feel really, really chunky, right? The, the gem will glow. Uh, we, the, we actually shake your arm a little bit, which feels really cool. Um, and all of these particles erupt from that moment. And all of these things move as you move your arm. So if you wanted to crush it and move, all of these things react to you. So these are things that you get in VR that you don't necessarily get in flat screen games. And they all work pretty, pretty well. They, they feel really cool. So, okay, let's recap. We're almost done here. Um, let's go over the lessons one more time. So we respect the player's central vision. Make sure that they can see at all times. Because if they can't see, they can't play. Strive for style, but beware of distracting the player. Um, we don't want to make the player flinch from their own attacks. That's not cool. So let's make sure to keep the screen clean when we can and get the effects in and out. The fighting game visual tricks that we learned work. It's really awesome. We can use hit stop. We can use screen flash. We can use um, camera shake. It was great, but you do have to iterate to make sure it works in VR. And then reward interactivity play, interactive play with VFX. And I think that is um, interactive play is something that I, I think is needs to be really emphasized most of the time in VR because that's such an important part. Um, the player interacting with the game with their actual body. Okay, so we're pretty much at the end here, guys. Um, I really want to challenge you guys um, after going through this and listening to all this to 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 study visual effects in fighting games. Um, it's something that I do all the time, and I think everybody reacts to visual effects in games, but I think it would be really awesome to um, have more conversations about what exactly the V effect might have meant or what it might have done or and what did it what did it impact that moment in the game or every moment in the game. Um, in development, push boundaries. I mean, we, we wouldn't have got this far if we didn't think, man, I want to try this. We sh There's no other examples of doing this in VR, but let's try it anyway. Let's just do it. Let's go for it. And then communicate. And that's, I think that's just the universal. Just keep, keep communicating. Design and VFX together was a win for us. So if you can keep being a team and you can keep working together and you can collaborate on what feels good and how it might feel good and you can work together pushing those boundaries and you can work together in the study of the VFX, man, everything comes together. And it really came together for us. It was really cool. So there's still a lot more to learn, but I'm happy I could share this with you today. So thank you so much for listening. Um, and if you want to keep talking, please message me. Here's all my information. Um, you can ask me questions if you have any comments and let's chat, hit me up on Twitter or Instagram. If you wanted to look at my pictures and thank you so much. Stay safe.